Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Todd Biscuit. I thought I'd bring you uh, some information on the update, the recent update, for Tribes Ascend, which is the Cloak and Dagger update, which adds three new items for the Infiltrator, as well as two cosmetic skins. I'm going to focus on those as opposed to the other changes in the patch, because I don't really know enough about the game to talk about balance and things like that, but I can give you some first-hand experience of using these new Infiltrator items. So, what we got? We've got three items. One is called Jackal. That replaces your primary weapon, whether it be the Rhino SMG or the Stealth Spin Fuser, and it launches three sticky grenades, which can then be detonated as you so desire. So... Think about the sticky launcher for the Demo Man, and you've pretty much got it there. It can stick to people as well, and you can detonate after only launching one. When you press the reload button, or when you click again, having launched three Jackal Grenades, they will detonate. That in itself is kind of awkward, I might add, because it results in you accidentally detonating your grenades before you want them. I'm not really sure why they made it a click. It would make sense just to either disable that completely, or make it a double click, or make it something like just having the reload button now you'll notice here i'm doing some fairly significant damage in the gen room with this thing what i should point out with the jackal is that it actually doesn't do that much damage against the generator it's actually fairly pants against the generator it seems like for some reason and what this is what i'm seeing and i don't know what your personal experience might be of it but that the when the first grenade detonates, it actually destroys the other two before they can do any damage. I mean, these things do about 600 to a generator, right? And you would think, well, okay, that seems pretty good. If I stack three of them and then detonate, that's 1,800 damage. That's pretty good. You know? It's about a sticky and a half, really. But you don't seem to do that much damage at all. And in fact, it takes ages to blow up a generator because you then have to fire one grenade, detonate, one grenade, detonate. It takes forever. And honestly, it actually takes longer, I think, than the stealth spin fuser would, which does about 700 damage to a generator, give or take. Now, what you can do with this thing, as you've probably noticed as I just passed there, is detonate these things midair and do what's effectively an airburst. And it requires a hell of a lot of practice to nail this down, but it can make you a fairly effective airborne combat guy, which is something that you might not have been able to do if you'd taken the stealth spin fuser. If you're very, very good at the game, of course, you can get blue plate specials over and over again, but if you aren't, like me, if you suck, then there is an alternative in that you can practice detonating your grenades at the right time in the air so that they actually get a hit. And if you do hit with these things, you can do a fairly significant amount of damage. You're looking at doing maybe about 500 with a detonation, and depending on how close it was, of course, you're going to do a little bit less. And I hate technician thumpers indoors. I just want to point that out. Those things are the bane of my existence. Ugh. Oh. What you can then do, of course, in midair is try and lead the target a little bit. Maybe you miss with your first grenade as it's flying, you adjust, and then you fire your second and your third, and then you detonate them, and you get a nice explosive pattern that may catch your opponent in the blast. But don't expect to nail them with all three. You can also stick them to your enemies, which is incredibly hard to do if they happen to be airborne, but not so hard to do if they're standing still like a twit. So that's nice and easy there. To be fair, he had no HP left. I could have just knifed him. So speaking of knifing, there is a secondary weapon which replaces the silenced pistol, which is the throwing knives. So you get five of these things per clip. Yes, clip. I'm not kidding. With upgrades, you can have up to six, and you've got quite a lot of spare ammo with them. You don't really run out all that quickly. They're going to deal about 350 or so damage on a direct hit with a very small AoE and splash of about 100. Now, my experience with these things has been a bit mixed, but as I've practiced with them more and more, I'm liking them more than the Stealth Pistol. They actually seem to have a better velocity than the Stealth Pistol does, and once you practice with them, it gets quite easy to at least have one connect every now and again. So it's ideal for finishing off opponents that you've done damage with the Jackal or the Stealth Spin Fuser with, who are in midair. I think that once you practice with these things a lot, you might find them rather useful, to say the least. What you'll find is that a lot of the infiltrators at the moment are using the jackal and the knives, because, hey, they want to try out the new stuff. I'm trying to think of what kind of combination we've got. I think, honestly, I would use the knives in almost every scenario, as opposed to the actual pistol. As regards to the jackal, a bit more situational, I find it difficult to give up my stealth spin fuser for this thing. 
Now, what you may have noticed before I went up the conduit there was that I threw a grenade on the ground, and that grenade is the final piece of equipment, which is the smoke grenade. Now, the smoke grenade replaces your sticky grenade. That in itself is a fairly terrible thing, in, but the most important thing about the smoke grenade is that it stealths you instantly, and it also then gives you a couple of seconds of stealth, even if you're taking damage. But if you shoot, you're going to come out of cloak again. So it's useful for escaping, but it's not going to keep you in stealth all that long, especially if you don't have any energy to begin with. Now, as you're probably aware, when you stealth, it takes a couple of seconds to actually go invisible. The smoke grenade gets rid of that restriction. You see that someone actually smoke grenaded there, which is why I spread my jackal across the entire room and then detonated, because he was going to be on the floor somewhere. So we can easily eliminate it. But you've seen the effect of the smoke grenade there. It's very situational, and I don't really like it all that much. The main issue with it is that it replaces the stickies. And the stickies are so very, very good. They deal huge damage. It's fairly easy to sticky a target, especially a heavy, indoors. So you can do a lot of damage there. And they are the best gen-destroying equipment you can possibly think of. They do so much damage. Now, of course, there are arguments that blowing up the generator is not quite as important as other objectives, but you still want to try and do it every now and again. You just don't want to be having four or five people camping in the generator room. That's an absolute waste of resources. Some people do it because a lot of easy points. Aside from that, though, I would say that, yeah, have the infiltrator go in there and blow things up. Don't have six or seven infiltrators go and blow things up because it won't really be all that helpful. The second problem that I've got with the smoke grenade is the fact that while it might seem awesome that you can vanish, in an indoor situation you're probably going to get hit by AoE anyway and blown up. You don't have a lot of health to begin with. Chances are you're using your smoke grenade because you are under fire and you've already taken some damage. So you only really need to be hit by one more splash and you'll just come to pieces. It, it's, you, you die to a mortar instantly anyway, regardless of what health you happen to be on. Spin fuses can kill you instantly. It's really not that hard if you've already taken a hit. So in that situation, what is the use of the thing? It doesn't make you invincible by any stretch of the imagination. And as you saw earlier, someone used the smoke grenade and my option was very, very obvious. Like, all right, okay, I'm just going to put down a spread of jackal grenades and you die. Simple as that. I used it right there and I was able to take out a technician in the process, but then get blown away by a base turret. So I've got to say the smoke grenades are probably the least useful of the three items. The jackal is... Uh, it's... It's difficult to say because I think they've nailed it quite nicely in giving you a, very much a side grade item because that's what you really want if you're going to have a model where you either pay experience to unlock something or kind of like the TF2 model, you wait for it to randomly drop or you trade for it or whatever and uh, you also have an item that you can all, you can buy, you know, you can pay actual money for it. You don't want it being straight up more powerful than the items you've currently got and the Jackal isn't more powerful than the Spin Fuser per se, it's difficult to make the comparison because they are two very, very different weapons with uh, different ways to actually fight as well as different purposes. The air bursting thing is nice, honestly. Against heavies, it's a pain because you've got to hit them so many damn times with it. And with heavies, it seems easier to just wait for them to hit the ground and then go for a direct hit with your spin fuser every now and again, or even just try and hit them with a sticky. With air bursting those grenades, it's going to take you a bloody age to actually bring a heavy down, but you can very easily do a lot of damage to a light with these things if you're well practiced. You need some fairly serious spatial awareness and prediction skills, which are not exactly my strong point. So, you know, sometimes I'm able to do good damage with it. More often than not, I'll just end up detonating the damn things prematurely and not actually having them hit the target whatsoever. But I can definitely see what they were going with. It also gives you the ability to clear flag stands and do an awful lot of havoc within the base, destroy defenses, get rid of mines, EMP, force fields, and so on and so forth, as well as rain down a lot of damage on a heavy that happens to be standing there just defending the flag. So there is a lot of use in there. I mean, for instance, if we just use it there, detonate that, that kills the force field and the turret, then use a smoke grenade to get out of it, send another salvo up there just in case anyone happens to be standing around. And then, of course, you know, you can engage in combat one way or the other with this thing, but it's, it's still a very tricky concept. And honestly, I would be much more comfortable with a spin fuser in this situation than I would be with a jackal. The knives... Like I said, they take a lot of practice, but I'm starting to like them quite a bit. You saw, like, big hits there, 375 a hit. That's not too shabby at all. Uh, 
you know, this guy really should end up going down here, but I have a feeling he won't. <laughs> That's just... Can I get him with a knife? Yes, I can. There you go. And that's a very satisfying little kill there. Now, there's one last thing that I would like to talk about with these items, and that's the actual price of it, because the Cloak and Dagger update also has two skins with it. Now, if you want to buy the premium pack, which contains the three items plus the two skins, you're going to pay 2,000 tribes gold. That's about $22. That is a bit much, I feel, honestly. In fact, the prices in general are just a bit much. I understand the whole idea of, hey, it's a cosmetic skin, it doesn't really matter, but... What I want to point out is that if you lower the prices, you're going to get more sales overall. And yes, you can unlock the weapons with experience, but it's a slog. Even if you happen to have a booster, 100,000 experience for a weapon is quite a lot there. You'll notice, you know, I get 6,500 there. That's good. But that was because I got support two and match victory and first win of the day. So it stacked the experience up quite a bit there. If you're getting a lot of good kills, getting a lot of air mails, blue plate specials, so on and so forth, then yeah, you know, you're going to be getting quite a lot of experience there too. But what I've got to say is that I feel the prices in general for gold just should be lower than they are because you're going to get more volume of sales that way. I have a reasonable amount of cash, but I think it's a far superior business strategy to just lower the prices across the board because then people are willing to go there and just purchase something on a whim. It's all about impulse buying with microtransactions. You've got this really potent mixture of low prices with convenience. So, so say someone's just got off a game of tribes, like, oh, wow, I just got owned by the Jackal, or I just saw one of my guys doing great stuff with that smoke grenade and knife combo. Or even I saw one of those guys in one of those great new skins. I want that. What you'll do is you'll go to the tribe store after having that kind of motivation, having seen them in action, and then if you see... 22 bucks for the pack you go <laughs> no that's ridiculous because to be honest it is that's a very very high price for this kind of stuff it's much higher than you would see from games like league of legends for instance and even then you pay like five dollars or five euros for a skin which is still a little bit much so i would say you lower the price to the point where someone gets out of a game they go to the store and like oh a couple of bucks for a weapon absolutely yeah charge two dollars for the jackal for instance not 780 tribes gold which is about nine dollars if you were to buy the smaller pack of gold which is 1800 gold for twenty dollars and that actually includes a 400 gold bonus so it's actually 1400 gold for twenty dollars have the smoke grenades be 75 cents look at how many people will just pick them up there because, hey, it's convenience. I don't have to spend my XP on that stuff. It also means your game's kind of a bit more balanced because people don't have to spend absurd amounts of experience on that kind of stuff. What they can spend experience on is armor upgrades and the actual weapon upgrades, which will balance the game up just a little bit more, but still have this sense of progression going on. So as far as I'm concerned, they do need to lower the prices on these items. The skins are, I mean, they're good. They did price the assassin skin higher than the mercenary skin. I don't really blame them because the assassin skin is just much better. You basically look like a Sith Lord with the assassin skin, and the mercenary skin looks like you've got a fishbowl on your head. So I'm not really so keen on that. But also bear in mind that skins in this game aren't perhaps as potent as they would be in League of Legends because you can't see them. I mean, yes, you can see other people wearing them, but unless you're playing in third-person view, God knows why you'd do that, then you're not going to see your skin. You actually even get a cosmetic thing with the assassin skin, which is pretty cool. This is something you do see, where it replaces your melee animation with basically a Zangief green hand. That's neat. I like that. But still, you're asking quite a lot of money for these things. And I feel that significantly lowering the prices will actually make you more money in the long run. And you've also got a happier player base. I don't have a problem with them having some really premium stuff, like maybe a weapon skin that is just absolutely out of this world, or perhaps a really cool skin for your character. Fine, make those premium because there are some people that really want that. It also gives great variety in the game as well. It's like, oh, look at that guy. He's got a legendary skin or whatever. League of Legends does that, and it's... It's an okay business model. There's nothing really wrong with that. You can create some really nice artificial demand and a prestige factor 
but with this stuff especially bearing in mind it's the first set of items that really require you to actually pay real money and that you can't get the skins for experience then i would say that they started off on the wrong foot by pricing them too highly that is something that they can adjust and i would really suggest that they do so it would be nice to see maybe the players who bought them already actually get a refund of tribes gold if they were to lower the price it's not beyond the realms of possibility high res is always pretty receptive to community feedback and i just want to say that i support the microtransaction model i really do i think they have completely avoided buying power if you believe that you buy power in that game you're basically retarded and you don't understand what pay to win actually means but this is a little too much and I don't think people react well to it, and not a lot of people are going to buy it. I mean, if you bring out an update every month or so that costs 22 bucks or whatever, don't expect people to pay that regularly. I wouldn't pay it regularly. And I think that you're really missing out on actually having a lot of very happy and regular customers by just having lower prices for your digital goods. Volume sales. Learn from Steam volume sales. That is what matters. And if you want prestige items like skins that are high price, okay but do make them very very cool and also make sure that the prestige items are not the only things that you've got available to you that's the biggest thing isn't it when you think about it an item becomes prestige because in comparison to the other stuff it's much much cooler and it's much more expensive it's a premium item like that but these are the first two skins that put in they're already very expensive so you need a lot more cheaper skins and items before you can do stuff like that all right folks that's a look at the cloak and dagger update currently available for tribes ascend my name has been total biscuit and i will see you next time